Hello, it's Patrick, and welcome to some more Tesla news. It's It's been a while, but man, there, there's always so much news, and when I think I should put out a video, then there's more news, and then it just piles up, and <laughs> I figure I better get something out now or else it won't be news anymore. Pretty interesting things like how at Battery Day, Elon announced that they're gonna be making a $25,000 Tesla, and now Volkswagen's jumped in saying they're also gonna be making long range electric vehicle in the $20,000 market. Being Black Friday just the other day, you can see there's some pretty good deals on Nissan Leafs, Chevy Bolts, a lot of electric vehicles that you can get in the $20,000 range now. And with the new administration coming in next year, they're looking at reinstating the tax credits. Yeah, getting an electric vehicle in the $20,000 range is gonna be pretty reasonable next year. And also a lot of uh, used vehicles. There's a lot of Tesla Model S's that you can find online now in the sub $30,000 range that you can look into. And I just, I just think it's really exciting because not only are we gonna see this year all the pickup trucks from Rivian, the Hummer from GM, they're probably gonna start showing off the F-150 electric. There's the Bollinger and the Badger from Nikola and Lordstown Motors with their $50,000 electric pickup and of course the Cybertruck next year which is going to be amazing so starting at forty thousand dollars for a pickup that's pretty much a tank is about indestructible as they make for a vehicle these days as long as you don't throw a big ball bearing at the windows <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's pretty exciting times right now to be an electric vehicle fan the stark market has gone through the roof for Tesla and all the other companies that are getting involved in renewables and electric vehicles. Now the Model S, it's been a while since it came out and everybody keeps talking about a refresh and Elon says there isn't gonna be a refresh, but they always keep doing incremental things to make it a better vehicle. Like it's gotten significantly more efficient since it first came out with the same size of batteries. They've been stuck on the 100 kilowatt hour battery for a while now. But with the new Trimount motor Model S that's gonna come out, by the end of next year. With the Model S coming out next year, I mean, it's gonna have the new batteries, it's gonna have the crazy long range, and people are starting to wonder if there isn't a significant change coming up for early 2001, because over in Europe, they've already increased the prices of the Model S and X. And that's because everything that's being produced right now is going to America, they've already made and shipped out everything that's going overseas. So, It'll be interesting to see what kind of update there is. There's probably gonna be something fairly significant um, to justify the price increase. So it's something to keep your eye on um, and be, be aware that there might be some kind of a, a, a fairly decent update going on with the Model S and X. It may not be a, like a big body change. It might just be, you know, a, a center console that's similar to the, the Y and the 3 for uh, might be you know less of a portrait and more of a landscape type layout for the screen, something like that, or who knows? It, it just could be some other little updates like the heat pump, of course. Um, I, I can't imagine that not being in the new Model S and X is coming out soon. They've already updated the Model 3. It came out first with the Model Y, and that helps out a lot in colder climates. My Model X that I've had for almost a year now started having the shutter problem where when you accelerate hard, it feels like it's vibrating. First, I had a, a mobile service come over and take a look at it and they confirmed that it was an issue. They can't do anything remotely, so I had to take it over to Denver to get it worked on. And they went ahead and they fixed it uh, for now. <laughs> and it's just, a, it's just a problem that everybody has. After about 10,000 miles or so, they start having this, this shutter problem. And the solution is supposedly you just leave them in a lower suspension all the time but that's not always possible. Plus the tire wear is horrible. Apparently over in China, they were doing a recall on the SNX over the suspension. Over here in America, they're looking at doing an investigation whether or not there needs to be a recall on a certain range of vehicles of SNX produced from 2017 to 2019. I hope they get this right. <laughs> if they're doing a refresh or something like that, I hope they can get the suspension and the shutter fixed. From what I understand, it's just the, the Model X has so much range from the suspension going from low to high that in the highest modes, it's just too much torque. So maybe they might have instituted that Cheetah Stance ludicrous launch to kind of counterbalance that by lowering the front suspension, not only getting faster speeds, but also helping reduce the impact of the torque, you know, bending those shafts, those half shafts that they keep having to replace. 
Let me know if you have a Model X or you know people that have had a Model X that have had this issue and how many times it's been replaced. On my previous Model X, I've had them fixed four times, I believe. And this is the first time on my new one, which I had hoped would have been fixed when they switched to the Raven and the new suspension, but apparently not. It sounds like there's an aftermarket solution where they basically permanently lower the Model X. The whole reason I bought the Model X was to have the higher suspension because I go out to tower sites out in a little bit, little bit off-road. Okay, a lot of it off-road, but I can get to it with my Model X and I really don't want to have to drive a truck, at least not until the Cybertruck comes out. So, Speaking of unfortunate things, uh, the Model Y, some of the first production models are being recalled for some loose bolts <laughs> in, the, in the steering control. Apparently it didn't cause any wrecks or anything, but if you are one of those early owners, keep an eye on your email or a text to be alerted that you need to go to service and get that fixed because it could be pretty dangerous. Full self-driving, I'm not fortunate enough to be one of the beta testers, but there are tons of videos out there from the handful of people that get, did get on the full self-driving beta and it looks phenomenal. It still tries to kill you every once in a while, same with autopilot, but as long as you have your hands on the wheel and you're ready to take over, I think they should just go ahead and release this thing. Everybody's super excited about it, and the more they're learning, the better. And with each update, it seems to get significantly better. Elon said that it's going to be two steps forward and one step back a lot. And it sounds like the last update was like that. Uh, I think it was beta four, where it was doing some crazy stuff, uh, and it was basically a step backwards. And then the newest update it sounds like beta five, it's getting better again. Uh, he's talking about a wide release, wider beta release in two weeks. So I'd say maybe Christmas we're actually going to see that the, the new version 11 of the firmware with the full self-driving beta included, or at least to a much larger beta group. So that would be really cool. I can't wait. Super excited. And then there's the Tesla Roadster which was supposed to come out this year, which has been delayed at least until next year, possibly longer. They announced that they're gonna be doing colors like the very first Roadster, so you can get crazy lime green and all kinds of super color, or super car colors that are kinda of out there. That'll be kinda of nice, rather than the normal black, white, gray, silver, whatever that everybody seems to be getting lately, or just red or blue. If you got a Roadster, what color would you like it to be? So on the Tesla semi front, like I had mentioned earlier, Elon was saying they need to get up their capacity of making cells before they really start mass marketing these Tesla semis. A lot of outfits have already pre-ordered them and they're talking about a 620 mile range, which is a thousand kilometers on a single charge carrying a 40 ton load, which sounds great. <laughs> and this is kind of the same, this is, these are these new battery cells that they talked about at Battery Day. They're gonna go in the semis and the cyber trucks and yeah, we're talking about really large uh, capacity. And one of the things I just posted on Twitter, a coworker of mine, we were looking at the new Hummer EV. GM sent us a poster to put on our wall, which I thought was kind of fun, just because we have other GM vehicles. And he's like, wait a second, doesn't, doesn't the military use Hummers? And well, how, how are they gonna charge those? I mean, it wouldn't be very, very good for military use out in the middle of the desert. And I thought, wait a second, like if you have an electric vehicle, if, if we're switching to electric vehicles, why do we need to have military out in the middle of the desert fighting over resources like oil? So yeah, that's, that's kind of the point really. I mean, that's a sign of the times. If they've got the Humvee that's all electric, it's going from the gas guzzling one to the like super efficient one. Although. You could argue this Humvee is probably the least efficient of electric vehicles. And it's also very costly at over $100,000 for the first production units. But it's, it's a good sign. And then uh, other people replied on Twitter that actually the military has been going um, more and more towards renewables, solar, just because transporting fuels and things is actually a lot of, um, there's a lot of danger in it, I guess, uh, having to move fuels back and forth. And heck, if you throw up a solar canopy to charge your vehicles, you don't have to be running fuel back and forth. So actually it, it may be the better route to go. It just, uh, the energy density is not as great, but with all these improvements, that's changing and it's changing quick. This article from Electric talks about how Tesla is launching uh, a microsite to boost hiring of the battery cell division. 
So Tesla is going gung-ho with their Berlin factory, their Texas factory, expanding the China factory, the Nevada factory. They're going to build another factory somewhere. They're, they're, not, they're not slowing down. Like they said, the demand is higher than what they can produce. So they, they're, they're kicking things into full gear uh, to comply with growth. They, Tesla is now worth more than all the other American automakers combined which is just ridiculous. And it, it, it's cool because it shows that not only can renewable and electric vehicles be a better solution, they can also be a more um, profitable and affordable solution <laughs> in the long runs. And that's what everybody's believing and counting on at this point. And it looks like it's going that way. Uh, my last thing is Wild West EV is the little company that um, my family runs putting up charging stations and we put a lot of effort <laughs> into putting uh, 22 kilowatt hour charging stations that are level two in because the model s and x used to be able to do that they had dual chargers and then they stopped <laughs> and it got us to rethinking maybe we shouldn't be putting these in anymore now apparently the audi e-tron is giving you the option of doing dual chargers again at 22 kilowatts i certainly hope that the Cybertruck is going to allow for 22 kilowatt charging because if you're going to have something that's going to be you know half the efficiency of the other teslas you're going to need double the charging for it so of course superchargers are great level three is great but they're so much more expensive to install um, from the electrical standpoint and the hardware they would just allow us to do the onboard charging at a faster rate that would be great <laughs> anyways Thank you guys so much for watching. It's always fun reading the comments below. Click subscribe if you hadn't. Try and get these things out every couple weeks or so. I'm going to be doing a review of a Tesla Model Y cover. They're going to send me one. Um, it's not paid or anything, so I'll give my honest opinion on what I think. But we have a Model Y at my work. It's outside, so it could be fairly useful, especially in these super cold sub zero temperatures that we have. Thanks again for watching. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, I'm at Walking Crow. If you haven't yet, you can get a Tesla ring. If you order immediately, there's, there's a chance my wife might be able to get it in by Christmas. No guarantees. <laughs> we can at least send you a picture by then. Uh, she's, she's, she's furiously making some right now. They allow you to get into your Model 3 or your Y with a ring, and you don't have to carry around the little card. Uh, they are awesome looking. They have the chip inside them and the wiring. They are waterproof, although they are not uh, for people in heavy construction. <laughs> we unfortunately had have uh, some people say that they have failed over the past year. They do, they are breakable. Um, they can't take a lot of strain, but we do offer a half price replacement if that does happen. And we do offer a 30 day warranty on them. So, uh, that said, normal everyday use, they work fine, but if they get extra stress on them, they, they can break. They're not, uh, they're not a Cybertruck. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.